So I was looking for that article, and I found another article I'd written for the same newspaper um, a few years later, in which I explained what was going to happen with regard to immigration and the Conservative Party and the right-wing media. I, I mean, it was, it's like plumbing mystic Meg. It, you will reach a point, unless somebody gives their head a wobble, where you just are competing to be viler and viler and viler about a largely non-existent constituency of people which you use to spook others that they are somehow under threat. And, and the best encapsulation of that process I ever came across, and I came across it years after I wrote the article, was when people started ringing in, and it's, this was about the time it happened. I remember now. So we had the, the the widow of a doctor, the German-born widow of a doctor, who rang us from somewhere in the north of England, and told us she'd already been told by neighbours, I think, that they voted Brexit in order to send her home. Uh, and and we came across a frankly astonishing list of people who rang into the program to describe, there was the psychiatrist, the French psychiatrist, whose own patients had told her that she was going to have to leave now because the Brexit vote had gone through. Um, it, 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 I, even reading it back now, I found it almost impossible to believe. I, I, I think if I'd been listening to that program, or those programs, because we did a few, from the perspective of having just vote for, voted for Brexit, I'd have thought, and I don't know how much time you spend on social media, but stay there long enough and you will find some truly astonishing takes. But I, I, occasionally I see people say, oh, the, 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 James gets actors to ring into his show. They're not real people. Or they deliberately select the stupid ones so that he can make them look daft. And, and you sort of think, well, I, I, I mean, they're actually... Okay, but whatever it is, whatever whatever gets you through the day. But I can just about imagine that if you'd voted for Brexit and you were nowhere near ready to face the consequences of your foolishness, that's just, I'll go no further than that, you would have really wanted to believe that the people ringing in, the doctor's widow, the psychiatrist, the lorry driver, all of the people ringing in to tell us what they'd already experienced, what had been unleashed. The morning after the vote, the sun had that... Um, uh, that picture of Polish shops on a, on a British high street, essentially saying we won't have to put up with this anymore. And the phrase that began to resonate around our studio was the phrase, oh, I didn't mean you. My mother-in-law voted for it. And I'm an immigrant, you told me. But she said she didn't mean you. She didn't mean you. Oh, I didn't mean you. And that was what I found myself thinking of yesterday when I saw uh, an article um, uh, written presumably in crayon by Honest Bob Jenrick, the, the Home Office Minister best known for ordering that a few murals of cartoon characters that might bring a tiny slither of comfort into the lives of desperate children be painted over at a, at a processing centre for unaccompanied unaccompanied child migrants. So Robert Jenrick walked into a building, a bleak and unforgiving building, where children who have no adult carer with them whatsoever, who have somehow by hook or by crook made their way into this country, facing enormous peril. You don't need me to tell you that a, that a seven-year-old girl embarked upon that journey this weekend and died. So imagine that she'd got here the seven-year-old girl who died in a French canal this weekend. Imagine that she'd got here and Robert Jenrick knew that there was a picture of Mickey Mouse on the wall of the room that she walked into. And he decided that was too nice. That's too welcoming. That might encourage other seven-year-olds to risk their lives in flimsy dinghies to try to come here because they have some family members in Birmingham or Basingstoke or Basildon or wherever it may be. And they're the only family members they've got left, left in the world. And, and Robert Jenrick walked into that room and he saw that mural on the wall and he ordered it to be painted over. You know, it was weird listening to Pretty Patel on Nick's show, wasn't it? Because it's not that long ago that you sort of thought they can't go any lower than that. You'd, you'd listen to Pretty P Patel banging on about immigration and you'd think that this is as bad as it gets. This is a, as bad as it gets. Short of actually jumping into bed with Nigel Farage, this is as low as the Tory party will go. Two years later, Priti Patel is literally jumping on a dance floor with Nigel Farage and people like Suella Braverman and honest Bob Jenrick are competing to make her look like Gary Blumin Lineker. And uh, 
And it's a mark, isn't it, of what happens when you let these genies out of bottles. The I didn't mean you genie. Oh, yes, we're going we're gonna to demonise all immigrants. We're going to demonise all foreigners. But don't worry, because we don't mean you. And I wondered this morning, looking at Honest Bob, and indeed remembering the... Um, I didn't mean you syndrome. Uh, Pat says, my lovely Polish dentist closed up and went back to Poland after Brexit, James. There was a lot of it about, a lot of it about. And I, I, I did think this morning when I looked upon Honest Bob Jenrick's latest um, intervention, latest bid for the bigoted vote, and I did find myself thinking, I, is it going to be different now that a white bloke's doing it? Because when the children of immigrants, whether it's Priti Patel or James Cleverly or... Suella Braverman uh, or Cammy Badenoch. When the, when a child of immigration talks about how awful immigrants are, you sort of feel your... I don't want to say your guns are spiked, but you feel your self-editing syndrome kicking in quite hard as, as, as a very privileged, middle-class, middle-aged white commentator. I don't know why I keep saying I'm a middle-class, middle-aged white commentator. I'm a commentator, therefore I'm almost certainly middle-class, middle-aged and white. I mean, it kind of goes with the territory. You could think of some that aren't. Um, but, uh, but, and male, of course, although that thankfully is getting a little better. Um, you, you, you sort of feel that you can't really go in as hard on a child of immigration who is trying to demonise immigrants, the, the, as, you, as you can on, on someone who's not a child of immigration. I, I think, I, I mean, you, you can't say that because you're an immigrant, you must therefore be in favour of, what do they call it, unlimited immigration. Because you are a beneficiary of immigration, you must therefore welcome the world and his wife into this country. I, I can see that that's not a fair demand to make of people and yet if I'm brutally honest with you and I always try to be it does land differently with me in some ways it lands worse I, I know there's a phrase isn't there about pulling the drawbridge up but I, I don't know that that's a helpful phrase I think the helpful phrase in these sort of contexts is um, I didn't mean you I didn't mean you so Honest Bob Jenrick says that immigration levels have made it impossible for people to integrate in British society. He is talking undiluted gibberish. It's straight out of the Farage playbook. A quick glance around the cabinet table would show you how successfully children of immigration can integrate into this country to the point where they hold some of the very highest, two indeed, of the very, very highest offices in the land. And... And yet here you have a Tory saying, oh, they can't, Im they, these immigrants, they just can't integrate. So here's the thing that struck me. He doesn't mean you. He doesn't mean you, does he? He doesn't mean Rishi Sunak or, or, or Rishi Sunak's parents. He doesn't mean David Lammy's parents, to be fair. He doesn't mean Suella Braverman's parents. He doesn't mean Priti Patel's parents. He doesn't mean James Cleverley's mum. He doesn't mean you. He doesn't mean, well, depending on what he'd say, if a journalist remembers to ask him about uh, Lee Anderson's disgusting attack upon Sadiq Khan last week, maybe he does mean Sadiq Khan. Maybe, maybe the rules are different for Muslims. I don't know. That seems to be the direction of traffic in which the Tories are driving while pretending that they're not at the moment. But he doesn't mean you. He doesn't mean Sajid Javid's dad. Does he? He, do he, doesn't, he doesn't. He means them, those, immig those immigrants, the ones over there. You can loosely perhaps typify them as the headbangers that attacked a kebab shop for selling Coca-Cola a couple of weeks ago. But that's what, you know, 10, 15, 100? That can't be the grounds for condemning everybody who describes himself as an immigrant or as a, as a child of immigration. And I don't want to ask, who does he mean? Either, because I know who he means. He means everyone and no one. It means you get to choose. It means you're basically being given permission by a Home Office minister to hate that person over there because you don't like the look of them. They're a bit too brown for it, the wrong kind of brown. Or a bit too Irish, maybe, or a bit too Romanian, or a bit too Polish, or a bit too black. It doesn't matter. You don't know them because if you knew them, well, you wouldn't mean you. I don't mean you. He doesn't mean them. He means the ones you don't know, the ones you don't like the look of because they've got a big beard or they wear a headscarf or they, they, they don't fully, they speak a bit of foreign on trains. Those, that's who he means.